sand. It's coarse, it's rough, and it can make for a great battery. And as weird as that might sound, it's just one example of the many earthy materials that are currently used for thermal energy storage, or TES. Now, a while back, we covered the debut of a commercial sand battery, which is big enough to supply power for about 10,000 people. But now, sand-based energy storage has reached a new frontier, individual homes. Companies like BatSand are currently offering heat batteries that bring hot, fresh sand directly to your door. Seems like you need just about anything delivered these days. But what stopped us from experimenting with residential TES before? How will heat storage impact our lives in our homes? And where exactly are homeowners supposed to put this stuff? I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. This video is brought to you by Factor and all of my patrons on Patreon, but more on that later. Your utility bill probably already tells you the story that we spend a lot of money heating and cooling our homes. In fact, according to the University of Michigan, over 30% of total US residential energy use is dedicated to heating. Water heating comes in at about 13%, which is really just another kind of temperature control. And according to the US Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, one fifth of all energy produced in the United States goes towards a building's thermal load. Residential battery systems like the Tesla Powerwall are a great way to get around what some consider the fatal flaw of renewable energy, and that's intermittency. But the dominance of lithium ion batteries comes with a host of its own downsides, like some of those ecological impacts and potential safety issues. Thermal batteries, or thermal energy storage, or TES devices, are one alternative that's worth watching. Now, we've examined them before, but here's a quick refresher. When it comes to TES, the acronym is pretty straightforward. They're batteries that store energy as heat. You charge them by passing electricity through a heating element embedded in your thermal medium, and this medium can be water, sand, or whatever. So long as it can hold onto that heat for a long period of time, we can then discharge and release that heat at a later date through a basic cooling process. Now, when used in combination with heat pumps and solar panels, TESs can do some amazing things. As far back as 2012, Drake Landing Solar Community got a record-breaking 96% of their yearly heating from solar energy. In 2015 and 2016, that number jumped to 100%. That was in cold, dark Alberta, Canada, of all places. TESs tend to have a very good round-trip efficiency rate, or RTE, which is the percentage of electricity put into storage that's later retrieved. It's very important for any kind of energy storage device. A 100% RTE would mean that every drop of energy stored can be withdrawn later and used. It's also thermodynamically impossible. For context, lead-acid batteries have an RTE of about 70%. Lithium-ion batteries for large energy storage, like those in many industrial-scale energy storage facilities, and maybe even your home, have an RTE of around 90%. But commercial and industrial thermal batteries are reportedly hitting RTEs over 90% or more. This got a lot of innovators thinking. If TESs are working so well for big applications, why not bring them home? But can TESs work on a small scale? And if they can, why haven't we tried this sooner? But first, why sand? I don't like sand. If you've ever visited the beach and make the mistake of ditching your flip-flops a little too soon, you're all too aware that sand holds onto heat remarkably well. And that's because sand has a low specific heat meaning it doesn't need a lot of energy to heat up fast. And sand's high density allows it to store large amounts of thermal energy. No chemical reactions means that sand batteries are low maintenance and have a long lifespan. We can also heat it to well above the boiling point of water and hold onto that heat with an RTE well above 90%. And for those reasons, we've seen companies like Polar Knight achieve viral buzz around their commercial sand batteries. We just heat the sand with renewable energy, then use air to move the heat from the sand to your house. It seems easy, so why haven't we been doing this all along? We'll dig a little deeper into that question, but there's something else we have to dig into first, and that's a tasty treat from today's sponsor, Factor. I'm gonna get really hungry talking about this. Now, I've been a Factor subscriber for over a year and a half now, well before they were ever a sponsor. I've been trying to eat healthier, cut meat out of my diet, and eat more vegetarian meals, even though I'm not still full vegetarian, but my schedule is so hectic, it made it difficult to do that. That's why a year and a half ago, I signed up for Factor. I've been eating more well-rounded meals that are chef-prepared and dietitian approved I've been partial to their calorie-smart and vegan and veggie options, but they've got something for everyone. It's taken the guesswork out of grocery shopping and preparing my own meals. Not only does it fit my hectic schedule, but it's like getting a quality restaurant takeout meal right at home and for less money than takeout. I feel better about what I'm eating, and they're delicious. What's also great is that Factor offsets 100% of their delivery emissions, they source 100% renewable electricity for their production sites, 
and offices and have sustainably sourced seafood. No prep, no mess, never frozen, and ready in just two minutes. Head to factor75.com and click the link below and use the code UNDECIDED50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shots for life. Two free wellness shots from three available flavors for every order while you're an active subscriber. Thanks to Factor for supporting the channel and thanks to all of you as well as my patrons who get early ad-free versions of my videos. So why haven't we been doing TES all along? Well, the main reason is size. Mass matters, especially for storing heat. I don't know what your living situation is like, but I don't have room in my garage for a 23 foot tall or seven meter-ish tall silo of sand. That's where companies like Latvian-based BatSand come in. It's difficult to reduce these devices down to a residential size. So BatSand cleverly plans to hide this sand tank underground, not unlike a septic tank. This is a necessity as even the smallest BatSand tank is gonna measure about 40 cubic meters. Though it's not all about space consideration. Having the tank underground helps to keep everything well insulated, kind of like a DIY geothermal system. Better yet, sand is dirt cheap, non-toxic, and if it's been properly selected and cleaned of other organic materials, non-flammable. Numbers wise, the device is intended for about a three to 400 square meter building and can store 10,680 kilowatt hours. That's impressive, assuming you've got the recommended 30 plus kilowatts of solar panels on your property. So what's the catch? Well, we just touched on it. It's that massive sand tank. Just like a geothermal system, digging up your yard is not cheap. I can talk about that firsthand. Something to keep in mind for later when we talk about price points. Netherlands-based Newton Energy Solutions, or NES, have a very different kind of TES to offer though. They're keeping it simple with a no-frills design that falls somewhere between a TES, a water heater, and a buffer tank. Fun side note, a water heater is already a thermal battery, technically speaking. It's just one that we can't turn the heat back into electricity. But seeing as you're already spending most of your electricity on heat, that's not much of an issue. No surprise then that the NES store looks and functions a lot like a water heater. In fact, if you don't have enough space for both, the NES store can flat out replace your water heater. Now the NES store combines special vacuum insulation with thinner than average tank walls. Together, these two small advantages allow the NES store to hold more water and much more heat than other devices in its weight class. And the system is available in two sizes. The smaller one has water volumes of 214 liters and 20 kilowatt hours capacity. The larger one is 320 liters and a 29 kilowatt hour capacity. Now, according to NES, even the smaller size can heat 600 liters of tap water to 40 degrees Celsius or about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a lot of showers. As a nice sustainability cherry on top, NES says their device is made from fully recyclable materials. Their plug and play tech is meant to replace existing water heaters and work with your PV systems. The company claims it can install an NES store in your house in under two hours. Of course, we'll have to see what third parties say once the NES store is on the market. And this goes for BatSand too. So if TSs are so great and can work on a residential scale, why have we overlooked them until now? There's a lot of little reasons, but the most prominent one is size. Now this is oversimplifying it <laughs> a lot, but as I mentioned earlier, bigger things cool off slower. So if you wanna optimize your thermal energy storage device, it pays to be big. It's kind of thermodynamics 101. But it's hard to both go big and go home. It puts these devices at odds with miniaturization and home deployment, and of course really drives up the price. Now these factors have traditionally made TESs a hard sell, especially when standard fossil fuel burning methods of heating are comparatively cheap and small. This goes for other use cases too. Why attach your solar farm or home solar panels to a less mature technology when more mature storage technologies like lithium ion batteries are available? And whether you're a homeowner or a utility company, it's hard to take a risk on a device that may never pay itself back. The numbers also don't look as good if you try to convert that heat back into electricity because a small but significant amount of power is lost in translation. Though statistically speaking, you're already spending most of your power on heating your home, so saving and using that heat later really isn't a problem. This means that TES devices work well in tandem with other energy storage ones like the Tesla Powerwall. Letting the TES handle a lion's share of the work and heating allows the chemical battery to handle other electrical applications. It's using the right tool for the right job. However, every time energy is converted from one form to another, there are energy losses. TESs have remarkable efficiency when their stored power is used for heating, but their efficiency drops to a much less exciting 50 to 70% when they've got to convert that heat back into electricity. Compare this to 90% for lithium ion batteries or even 70 to 85% for pumped hydro, and you can see why adoption has been slow. That makes them far less versatile than something like a residential chemical battery system. And if you're only able to afford one energy storage device, you're probably gonna go for the more versatile and available piece of technology. And speaking of affordability, that's also a major factor. 
The relatively small and cheap NES store has a 5,000 to 6,000 euro price tag, which is about 5,300 to $6,400, and it depends on the size. And these figures do include installation, though I worry those numbers will go up once it leaves the pre-order stage. Batsan's smaller 14 kilowatt system will run you a very reasonable 7,200 euros or about $7,700, but with installation, it balloons to a hefty 17,000 euros or $19,000 on the low end. That kind of price point means these devices aren't going to fit into a lot of budgets. However, these high prices do buy you some impressive RTEs. When I asked NES Store about theirs over email, a business development representative said that it had an RTE of 95%. Similarly, Andre Romundo, the head of operations at Batsand, told me over email that generally they store energy at a 92% efficiency and use that stored energy at a 94% efficiency rate. Now granted, these are likely best case scenario figures, but they're still very exciting. Even with this kind of performance, it's challenging to get homeowners to spend luxury prices on these kinds of things, unless they're really into energy independence or green tech, just like somebody else you know. Now, for these reasons, thermal batteries have been a niche technology for much of their 200-year existence. Demand really only started to blossom alongside renewables, partially because TES devices are only as green as the energy that we put into them. Take water heaters, for example. As recently as 2010, a typical resistance electric water heater produced four times more emissions than gas water heaters. How? Well, it takes a lot of energy to heat that kind of thing, and that energy was mostly coming from fossil fuels. But now, with green energy being more abundant and the problem shifting from generation to storage, electric resistance water heaters, and by extension thermal batteries, are looking better and better. According to Sydney's University of Technology, by 2030, resistance electric water heaters will be radically more energy and emissions efficient than gas heaters. Heat pump water heaters already are, and I've got a video that goes into my experience with one. And speaking of heat pumps, it's looking likely that TES devices could follow a similar path. And I hope they do, considering how they could work with the rest of your home energy system. I mean, think about it. Your solar panels gather energy for your house, including your heat pump and TES. These devices will keep your home at a cozy temperature all day. And with the massive burden of heating taken off of your battery system's plate, it's more juice to spend on all your other electrical needs. The synergies at play here are just so cool. So what's not to love? Well, the cost of purchasing and installing solar panels, a heat pump, a battery system, and a TES, but we're working on that. Here in the US, TESs are more affordable than ever thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act. That's because many of the IRA battery storage provisions also apply to TES units. That means you can get a whopping 30% tax credit on your TES device. And this jumps to a 40% tax credit for projects made with domestic materials. That should go a long way towards making them more affordable for the average household. With incentives like this on the table, I think we'll see an expansion in domestic TES innovation and manufacture, and competition should help to make thermal batteries more affordable over time. So where does this leave us? I really do think that we're at the dawn of a new age here. Thermal energy batteries are just starting to break into the residential market, and when we circle back to this topic in a couple of years, I won't be surprised at all if there's a lot more companies on the scene. But what do you think? Do you want thermal energy storage for your home? Jump in the comments and let me know. I'll see you in the next one.